Hi, this is Ryan Dahl. Uh, I want to give a small demo of using libuv with lib with uh, the HTTP parser to write a web server uh, in C, a very, very simple web server. The point of this is to introduce libuv to people and hopefully get some people interested in hacking on it. Um, it's still very much under development and API is changing, so uh, be warned. Uh, but it's looking good so far. So libuv allows you to do I do socket I/O well on Windows using I/O completion ports, and on Unixes you get the ePoll and KQ and uh, whatever uh, optimal I/O multiplexer you have on your operating system. Um, it's a really small library. It doesn't have any external dependencies, so it's it's fairly easy to just drop into a small project. Similarly for the HTTP parser. So <clears throat> what I want to do is is just throw together a little example and hopefully encourage some people to start looking at these utilities. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to make a little directory called web server. And in here, uh, we're going to put our stuff. Um, so first of all, we're going to go into projects, libuv, and this is just a, um, this comes from GitHub. Uh, I'm going to uh, git archive it out of here. Git archive dash dash prefix uh, uv head pipe cd slash uh, temp web server and then tar xf dash. Okay, does that work? I have no idea. Let's see. Do, do, do. Yes. Great. Now let's go to the HTTP parser and do the same thing. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we've got our stuff here and our dependencies. That's all we need actually. libuv has some files there and HTTP parser has some files there. Great. So now let's start our web server. So let's just start very basic here. Let's do standard IO, which also exists on Windows, so don't worry. Main and printf hello world. Okay. So let's just make sure that we can um, compile this thing. GCC O web server web server dot C. Okay, that works. So now let's just start a make file because we're going to be compiling this thing a lot, right? So let's start a little make file here, which does web server and depends on web server dot C. And we're going GCC dash O web server server dot c okay and if I just do make it says web server is up to date there we go okay so from now on I'll just do this cool all right so we've got our our uh, little web server started here now uh, we need to include libuv so let's do this, uv, uv.h is the header file. Um, and libuv has an initialization function, which you have to call, and then a run function to enter the event loop. And like in here, we're going to set up some servers and stuff. But not yet. Um, let's just make sure that we can compile that. So does that work? No. Okay. Random errors, undefined symbols. What's wrong? Well, we're not linking to it. So what we need to do is build UVA, the uh, static library. Um, and the way that we'll do that is just, you know, CD, make CD into UV, and I think that's it. Should be good. And then up here, we need to, the web server needs to depend on that, and we need to link that in there. Okay. So 
Does that work? Okay, so it's building um, libEV on Unix. It uses libEV on, on Windows. Uh, you won't have that. Um, so it has to run the configuration for the first time you build it. After this, it won't need that anymore. Okay, so that almost worked. We're still getting an undefined symbol uh, EV default pointer, default loop pointer. This is uh, kind of annoying and it would probably take you a little while to figure out, but what you really need is a define uh, EV uh, multiplicity, if I can spell correctly, equals zero. Um, LibUV uses that uh, flag um, and you know, it doesn't matter what it does actually, but um, is it defined in here? No. Wait, hold on. I'm going to show you. UV make file EV mul. No, it's in, sorry. Uh, config Unix make EV multiplicity. Okay, so uh, that is what libuv is using and we need that to uh, compile it because we're looking at libuv headers um, and stuff. So let's try that. Okay, great, that worked. So notice that even though we called the event loop here, which normally wouldn't exit, because we haven't set up something like in Node, uh, we just drop out. Um, so what we want to do now is of course actually start a server. So let's do this. A server has the type uvtcp, and we'll just make a static uh, global variable called server. It should work. And the way that we initialize a server is uvtcp in it, and then we give it the address of the server. And the next argument is a close callback, which we don't need because we're never going to close the server. And the third argument is. Um, a, uh, uh, a data pointer for a baton or uh, some, some random pointer to, to stuff that you might want. So now that we've initialized that, um, the reference count of the loop has been increased by one. And so now it shouldn't exit when we, when we run this. So let's try that. Okay, so now it's not exiting because the, we have something on the loop. However, this server is not bound to any port and it's not uh, listening on anything. So we need to, first of all, bind this thing to some address, and then we need to UV listen. And the way that UV listen works is uh, you give it the backlog, uh, whatever, man, man to listen if you're interested, and you need an on connection callback. So first, let's just get bind working. Um, before we do that. Um, <clears throat> so how do we get an address? Well, uh, let's look at the UV header file here, um, UV bind. So this guy takes a handle, a TCP handle, like the server, and it takes a SOC address in. And that, that struct SOC address in is, um, for, is, is passed by, by value, not by reference. I mean, it's just a, basically a 32-bit number, right? It doesn't really matter. So, um, you know, you can go look at Beej's guide and figure out how to initialize this thing, but actually we've got this nice convenience function because I hate remembering how to initialize uh, sock adders, and uh, you can just use this, so we'll use that. Um, so, struct sock added r in, address equals uv ip4 adder. I think that was the function. Yes. And then we can just say, oh, we want to listen on 000, and we want to listen on port 8000, right? So that should work. Um, bind returns an integer. So um, let me do that. And that integer is zero if the function succeeded and non-zero if it failed. Um, <clears throat> And so let's, let me just quickly show how you deal with errors in libuv. You do last error, uv last error, and um, it will return you a uv error type error. Now you want to print the error. So um, what you can do is uh, let's do an fprintf standard error. 
uh, find, and then so that would indicate a bind error. And then we need a string. This is this error thing is basically an error code. Um, to get a string, you do uv string error and give the error object. Again, pass by value, even though it's a struct. Um, and then I don't know. Well, we're in main here. Let's just re return from from that, like like so. Okay. So let's see. Can we bind to a port? Uh, yes, we can. Um, what if we tried to bind on port 80, which we shouldn't be allowed to because we're not root? It says permission denied. Okay, great. We're printing errors correctly. Now we need to listen on uh, a port on on the port. Uh, so a little two-step process. I'm just going to copy the error handling here, and I'll just change this to listen. And then we need to specify this uh, on connection handler. Um, okay, so on connection handler, you know, you can look at the UV listener thing in the header file here, and you'll see, and in the header file, it's called an accept callback, but I'm going to call it a connection callback. Um, and you can uh, see what that guy looks like by doing that. Okay, so that's, that's what the the connection callback. So when somebody connects to the server, it should call that callback. Let's set up this on connection callback by doing this to void on connection uh, UV TCP type star uh, handle. And let's just put in a little assert here that says, you know, handle is the address of this just to make sure that we have some idea of what we're doing here. And I'll also put in a print mm, on connection. Look good? Okay, so let's compile that. Okay, we got an error undefined symbol assert. Well, I can tell you that's because I didn't put in uh, assert.h. Okay. Oh, wait, we still have bind on port uh, 80. Let's switch that to 8,000. OK, cool. Now we're listening on a port. Let me open up another terminal here and um, increase the font size here. And let's do netcat localhost 8,000. OK, cool. So we are now having a server. Of course, this doesn't do anything. Um, and I think it's even a memory leak. <laughs> oh, uh, no, it's not a memory leak, but, um, and it doesn't work twice. Okay, so there's some problems here. We need to correct them. Let's uh, go back into the editor here. Let me just resize this very carefully. Okay, now, so when we accept, first of all, let me take out this hello world because uh, it's kind of annoying me. And we can take out that because we've already set up the server. OK, so on connection, what we want to do here, what we have to do is accept the connection. It's kind of this two-step process. You get the callback, and then you need to call UV accept. Um, why is that? Uh, just to work around OS differences, um, in particular how Windows does stuff. Um, so <clears throat> here's the. Here's the UV accept uh, function. So basically what you need to do is give the server, which we have, and then give a client handle for the socket that we're about to accept, which is just uninitialized data. And the accept, this accept function is going to initialize it. And then a close callback for that, for that, client, um, for that client handle when um, when it's when it's done, and then again the a data handle, which is just a baton. You can just leave this blank if if you want. Um, so uv accept, and then we'll use our server, and then we need some some client handle here. Uh, I'll just leave that undefined now, and then we're going to have to have some close callback, and then we'll we'll just leave that data pointer null. Um, <clears throat> And then we're going to do some error handling here, too. Uh, so first of all, let me just copy this error handling up here. OK. 
Okay, so that would be the same as, as the other ones. Um, and can't return negative one from a void function. Okay, so how do we create, the question is, how do we create this guy, this handle? Uh, oh wait, not that handle. Uh, let's call this one server handle, server handle. Okay, understand server is our static variable here. Server handle is the same thing, which we're asserting there. Uh, I just don't want to reuse the same word. And then handle, we haven't defined yet. What we need to do to make a handle is malloc size of uv tcp type. And so we control the data of this. That's kind of an important philosophy of uv uh, and libuv in general. Um, we just kind of, uh, we make sure that, that the user controls all the memory. Uh, so, you know, maybe you're unsatisfied with malloc'ing on the connection and instead you want to have some sort of slab allocator or, you know, free list or whatever. There is different techniques that can go in here. Um, we're just going to malloc. Um, and so this, this guy's uninitialized data, UV accept will initialize the handle, handle, and, um, so that should be it. Let's add this on close. On close looks like a UV handle type. And uh, let's see. Uh, and then a status. OK. So in this one, I think we just want to free the handle. So when it, when it closes, we'll free it. And then we can say, like, you know, uh, disconnected. I'll say it here, connection connected to make it uh, some parity. Okay, so cool. Um, so we're accepting the handle now, and when it closes, it should call the close callback. Let's just make sure that we are running here. Uh oh, implicit uh, declaration of built in function malloc. Why is that? It's because we don't have uh, standard lib.h. OK, so that seems to work. And we can do this, and we can type, nothing happens. We can, now that we're accepting the connection, we can uh, get multiple connections. No ca close callback is happening. Uh, why is that? That's because we have to manually close connections on libuv. Um, so uh, one thing we could do, for example, is um, oh, yeah, is do uh, uv close handle. So we'll accept it and then we'll close it immediately, right? Um, so <clears throat> what I wanted to talk about is that uh, okay, so we're getting this error: passing argument one of uv close is incompatible pointer type. So you know, C, it's not really object-oriented, but you can kind of pretend it is. And what we've done is that this UV TCP type, of which handle, the type of the handle, um, is a subclass of a UV, a more general UV handle type. Okay, so, and UV close is, say, a method on UV handle type, and instead of uh, UV TCP types. So we have to cast it there. Um, and OK, so that should work, and we should get a close thing. OK, so now we're disconnecting immediately. Great, and the close callback is being called. But we want to write a web server. We don't really want to close it immediately. What we want to do is um, start reading data from the, from the web server. So. <clears throat> from the connection. And the way you do that is you do restart. Um, so how does this work? You do, we give it the handle, and then we give it an on, okay, wait, we have to look it up, uv read start. Okay, so first you give it the handle, then you give it um, an alloc callback, which I'll explain in a second, and then you give a read callback. OK, so let's see, on alloc and on read. So 
So we need to define those two functions, which you know we can look at their definitions here. So that's what the alloc callback looks like. I'll just copy it over into this other file. Call this a um, on alloc. Get rid of the type def. Okay. So that's what the alloc callback do something. Um, and the read callback looks like this. And let's just copy that over here um, on read. We'll do something there too. OK, so um, what do these things do? So as I said before, uh, libuv does not want to manage your memory. It wants you to manage your memory, because you might have very clever things that you can do uh, with these buffers and stuff. And so libuv wants to read some data off the socket. So it needs to ask you for a buffer. And that's what the onAlloc function is doing. Um, so we can just kind of ignore this handle. I'll call it a handle since uh, that's what we're calling it in here. We can just ignore the handle, and we can just malloc something of the suggested size. We can return any size to them, but um, we want to return. Let's just return the suggested size to make it super easy. Uh, and let's make a buff type. We'll uh, do a stack allocation here and then put that in the base. So this is like uh, the IOVEC type, basically. And this, the length of that is, is that guy. And then we, we just return this by value again because it's a very small little struct. OK, so that's what a very simple on alloc looks like. Um, you can get crazy advanced with this you know, allocation stuff. That's not libuv's job. It's your job. OK, and then on the read, you, you know, at some time in the future, you're passed back the buffer that you gave to on alloc. Um, and so your job here is to do something. Um, but importantly, at the end of this, you need to free this guy. So let's free that thing that we just uh, that we just malloced in the on alloc function. OK, and <clears throat> uh, what are the other handles here? Well, n red is the number of bytes read. So um, let's just try to do something simple right now. Let's write to standard out buff base n red. OK, let's let's just try to uh, to write out what we saw there. Um, n red can be negative here, so let's do this if this guy is positive. And we have some kind of uh, difficult uh, handling of errors here, but let's just leave that blank for now. Okay. Um, so can we connect to a server and you know print just kind of pipe that data out to the standard out? That's what this this program is doing now. So let's see. If we make that and run it and connect to it, then we say, hello world, blah, hello. OK, cool. Um, notice it did. we're not seeing the disconnected. We haven't UV closed the handle yet. We're going to have to do that. What we have to do is handle uh, EOF on the other side. Um, but you know, if we connect again, it should work. OK, cool. So that's working. Uh, how do we handle EOF? Well, that is one of these error conditions. Um, and so if, actually, let's say, if this is greater than or equal to 0, you write that. N red equal equals 0 does not necessarily mean EOF. This is all explained, by the way, in the header at UV read start here. Um, how to handle EOFs. I'm just going to do it. Um, so <clears throat> what we're going to do is we need to do a UV last error and UV error type error. And if one of the error codes is um, UV EOF, <laughs> I'm just going to say that. Uh, <laughs> And uh, in that case, we're going to like close, close the handle. I won't put it in yet. And otherwise, let's print an error here. 
So we'll do our same trick as before. We do uv string error error gets our error and f print f standard error. Um, and this is a read problem. So we'll do that. Okay. Notice that in every case here, I'm not jumping out of this function early. We always have to free this 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 buffer. Okay. Even if even if n red is zero, we still have to free the buffer. We we actually don't know the. Okay. I'll just leave it at at that. It's it's kind of up to the user to make optimizations here. Um, oh, we've got a invalid initializer twenty eight. Mm, UV last error. What did I have before? Uh, well, it doesn't matter. It's running. Okay, can we connect? Hello world. Works. And if I control C from netcat, oh shit, it doesn't work. Um, okay, so what's happening here? Oh, we didn't we didn't close actually. So we need to um, we need to UV close and then the handle, right? And again, we have to cast this to a UV handle type. So basically, we're receiving an EOF from their end, and we're just saying close up our end. And then at some point in the future, the on close callback will be called, right? Where where we'll actually free up our our side of of the connection. Why is this so weird? It's because we're trying to bridge very different semantics of different operating systems. But I assure you, you get the best of every world when you uh, follow this. Okay. Yes, we are now handling disconnects. Cool. Um, now what do we need? Um, so, <clears throat> so we're not doing any HTTP yet, um, right? If I if I turn on this server again um, and connect to it with this, I get that. But if I go to Chrome and go localhost uh, 8000, it doesn't return, right? It's spinning because we haven't made any response. But in particular, I get an HTTP request. So what we need to do is parse the data coming in and uh, act on it and actually send a response. So that's where the HTTP parser comes in. Um, so for every connection, what we need to do is, you know, when we get this data, we need to parse HTTP somehow. Um, So let's do this. First of all, we need to include HTTP parser, HTTP parser.h. And let's see if, uh, yeah, let's look in our make file. So right now we're just including uv.a.a. Um, uh, what we want to do is, is do the same thing for HTTP parser. HTTP parser is a bit more simple than uh, than libuv, so we don't have an archive file. We just have a .o. And to build that guy, by default, HTTP parser runs all the tests. So let's just tell it to build that thing, okay? And then we need to add this dependency to the web server, and we need to add that there. This line's getting a bit long, so let's make this go like that. Okay, great. Um, we should be building the HTTP parser now if we do make. Let's try it. Uh, did we do it? Yes. So, uh, okay, HTTP parser built. Um, and it seems that we are including it, so everything's good. When we did this malloc for the handle, right, what we want is a HTTP parser to be created along with that. Um, so for every connection to the server, you have this UV TCP type, which is kind of the UV handle to the um, connection. And you also need an HTTP parser. Let me open up the HTTP parser header file um, and just kind of uh, take a look at what that 
is uh, type def. <laughs> no, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Where is it? Struct HTTP parser, HTTP parser, node dash t underscore t. Um, so uh, here it is. You know, it's got all this stuff in it, but you need one of these per connection. Um, read, if you're interested in, in this stuff, read the readme here. We've, we've got a, some nice documentation about how to use this thing. But for now, what we want to do is just alloc a HTTP parser for each connection. So what we could do um, is like malloc size of HTTP parser and like, you know, have an HTTP parser handle and somehow pass it along with this guy. But, you know, I'm kind of against doing multiple malloc's, even though, I mean, this, this server is far from optimal here. Um, so what I want to do instead is create a new struct at the top here, which has, let's just call it uh, type def. Let's just call it a client type. And inside of this, we'll have a UV TCP type, which will be the handle. And we'll have a, oops, and we'll have a uh, HTTP parser and a parser type. That way we can just malloc, we can just carry this around all at once in one structure, right? So, um, and so how's this going to change now? So what we'll do is, is instead of doing this stuff, we'll do malloc size of client type and get a client pointer, okay? And then, you know, Everywhere here where we've used the handle, we're going to have to say client handle, right? And we actually have to put an address in because it's inside of the, the client struct. Um, yeah. So here's also a handle client. I think. Okay. So that looks good. Um, for HTTP parsers, you need to call this init function, which just kind of initializes the struct, right? Right now, it's just random data. So um, let's let's do that. Um, the way that works after we accept the connection, you know, if we did an error out, we'll do HTTP parser init, and then we'll do client parser, give a pointer to the parser, and we're going to we need to give the type of the parser. Is it parsing requests or responses? We're parsing requests because we are a HTTP server. And I think we have an initialized uh, HTTP parser. Now notice, um, so let's look at this on read callback here. Um, so somehow we need to get the HTTP parser here. And all we've really got is this UV handle. Um, all of these UV handles have a little data pointer in it. And so what we want to do is, is just put a pointer to the client type in there so that we can get a, a client out of from the, from the TCP handle. Actually, that handle pointer is exactly the this guy is, since it's the first member of the struct, is exactly the same address as this. But let's just do this anyway because um, uh, it makes life more understandable, I think. Uh, you know, we're using an extra byte. To set that data pointer, you previously we had it null here. Um, but to set the data pointer of this handle, we can just set this guy and so we'll just put client there okay so that should allow us to get the client and then we can do client parser to get the parser okay cool now what um well to actually parse http you need to use this http parser execute which takes several things the data and the length which we have this is the end at length is nred, data is buff.base, parser we've got, settings we'll figure out, but let's let's first do, um, let's get this all set up here. Um, 
So let's see, HTTP parser execute. And to get the parser, we go client parser and get the address of that, right? And then we have that weird settings thing. I'll just leave that blank, undefined right now. And then data, which is buff base. And then n red is the number of bytes that we want to pass to the parser. Cool. So this guy returns a size t, the number of bytes that it parsed. And if it parsed fewer bytes than uh, what we gave it, uh, it's an error. So let's do this. Parsed um, equals that. And if parsed is less than n red, as we didn't parse the entire thing, then somehow there is a parse error. Printf standard error parse error. Let's just do that. Uh, okay, so what's left here? Well, the settings thing is still undefined. Uh, let's fill that in somehow. Um, well, let's look at what that is. So const HTTP parser settings is a struct with a bunch of callbacks in it. So basically, you can get callbacks for various things that happen in the HTTP message. Um, I think we're going to ignore most of these for our hello world example and just get the uh, on headers complete. So right when we receive the, the end of the headers, we're going to do a callback, which um, does something. And that's it. OK, so um, let's see here. So settings, you know, we can use it for, we can just use the same struct for everything. So let's make a static HTTP parser settings, settings, okay? And we'll initialize that in the main function. So settings dot on headers complete equals on headers complete. So we, we're going to have to fill in that callback here. Um, okay. And let's add a callback on headers complete. What sort of callback is this? Well, it's an HTTP callback, which looks like that. Returns an int, takes a parser. OK. So in the HTTP parser, all these callbacks return an int. And this is for error handling. So if you encounter an error in your code, you can return a zero from one of these callbacks. We never want to have an error, so let's always return one. And what we'll do here is just printf got in HTTP message. Okay, so when we get an HTTP message, we should see that printed out. Um, let's try it. This actually works. It will be amazing. Uh, nope, does not work. Uh, line 40, incompatible type for argument 2 of HTTP parser execute. Let's check out line 40. OK, so we gave this settings thing. Uh, this is actually passed by reference, so we need to add an and there. That was the problem. OK, cool. Seems to be running. Let's netcat into it. Hello, world. Parse error. Great, because that was not an HTTP request. What if we curl HTTP localhost 8000 and send a proper HTTP request? We get HTTP message. And we're, we're still printing everything to uh, standard out, which we can remove shortly. OK, but we got an HTTP message. And we did not return any response, so curl is hanging. Great. Let's continue onwards. So first of all, let's get rid of this guy. I don't think we need to print that, print all the data to standard out anymore. Um, and what we want to do is in uh, on headers complete, we want to send a response. Okay. So, okay. Well, how do you do that? Uh, first of all, let's just define a response uh, to be. Mm, let's see. Uh, 
HGP 1.1, 200 OK. And uh, I don't know, content type text plane. And um, we'll have some content length here. Um, we want to send hello world, so I think that's about 10 bytes. And then we want, that's the end of the headers, so we do an RNRN. And then we say hello world. And we'll put a new line after that. Uh, okay, hello world, that's five, six, five more is 11, 12. Okay, so content length is 12. All right, I think that should be a decent HTTP response. Um, okay, so libuv deals with buffers and so since we're always going to be sending the same response to everybody let's make a static uv buff type with the response let's call it re rest buffer response buffer and we're just going to fill that guy in with the response uh, for everything um, Okay, so let's initialize that in main. There's probably a better way to do this, but whatever. Base equals response, think, and length equals size of response. Okay, I think that should work. So now we have a response for everything. Let me just compile that. Does that work? Great. So um, <clears throat> now somehow we want to uv write handle response buff, some, something like that, right? Um, it's not that simple <laughs> for doing uh, HTTP responses um, or to, to write something to a socket uh, because on Windows, we have kind of this idea of doing an asynchronous write. So you do a write and in the future, you get notified of it being completed. So that entails having some sort of handle to the asynchronous write that is going on. Think of this as a promise or uh, a future, if you will. Uh, in libuv, we call it a request. Okay, so we're making a request to do a write. And then we pass it an array of uv buff t's and then the number of buff t's. Um, so, you know, this is a uh, scatter gather sort of thing. Uh, we just have one, so our buff t, our buff count will be will be one, um, and then somehow we have to make a request, and we'll get to that. But first, let's do somehow we have to make a request, and then we want you know the address of the response buffer, and buff count is one. Okay, how do we make that response re that request object? Where do we get this guy from? Well, uh, we get that from uv request in it. And basically, you give it a handle and a callback. Um, and that's how you make it. So somehow you do uv request init, give it the request, and then the handle uh, we have to get to, and then the callback, which it will call after write. OK? Um, how do we, first of all, before we do get the request, how do we get the handle? Well, we should get that out of the parser. So parser also has a baton data, user data type, um, which we haven't filled in yet. But let's use that to get our, our client out of there from the, from the void star. And then if we have the client, we can do client handle address. Um, we need to fill in the data type for the parser. So when we initialize uh, the parser, we need to right after that do client parser data equals client. Okay, that fills in the data type. Uh, right. Okay, so that's how we get the handle. How do we actually get the request guy? Well, here we could malloc a request. Um, size of t u v request type, and maybe that fits your application. 
for us, since we're just sending one response per connection, why don't we just put it in our client uh, struct? So let's just go in here and, and add a UV request type, and we'll call it a write request, okay? Because we're just going to, in our very simple example, we're just going to do one write per request. Okay, so client write requests is our guy. And we, oh, I should have written that in here, right, request. And we want to give the address of that, so that will initialize it. And then we'll, we'll um, put that in here, too. Okay, we don't need to malloc anything. Look good? So that should actually uh, write the response, um, both on IOCP and on uh, ePoll and KQ. So let's make that and see if it works. Uh-oh, warning, error, after write undeclared. Okay, we, we, forgot to, we forgot to define this function after write. So uh, uv write callback looks like that. Okay, so it gets a request and a status. So um, void after write uh, uv request type star request int status. Okay, so what are we going to do here? What do we want to do after write? I think we just want to close the connection, right? So you can get the handle by doing request handle. Each request is associated with a handle. So I think that should work, hopefully. Um, I think we are done, possibly. Let's see. Make warning passing argument to a UV request in it from an incompatible pointer type. What does that mean? Well, uv request in it takes a handle type, which is the base class of uv tcp type. So what we need to do is go in here and cast this guy to a uv handle type. And under 80 columns, great, make and web server. OK, netcat to it, blah, parser. Cool, we should probably close the connection on parser curl it, and we get hello world. Excellent. Um, it seems that we are have actually built an HTTP server. Let's clean it up. On pars error, I want to close the connection, right? Pars error. We want to uh, uv close mm, address of client handle. We have to cast that. UV. That works. Netcat localhost 1000. Hello world. Pars error disconnected. Cool. That's great. Um, let's take out some of these. Well, let's. Uh, what do we want to do? Let's look at this guy in um, in uh, 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 whatever this thing is. Um, uh, activity monitor. I love it. Okay, web server is here. Okay, I, I just want to like point out that uh, <laughs> shit. How do I close that? This is small, right? Three hundred. Uh, I don't know if you can. Oh yes, zoom in. Uh, you can uh, see it's a small program, right? Um, God, I wish I knew how to uh, use Macintosh. Ooh. Okay, um, and I don't know. Let's. A, B it, just for fun. Uh, 30 seconds at 100 clients. Bombed. I think it's because I did local host and Apache Bench can't resolve it. Great. It's like doing stuff. Um, and hopefully it's not using a ton of memory. You always have to check this with when you're writing... Uh, Programs. Okay, so yeah, it's still half a megabyte. Let's take out all these uh, all these messages. So print f connected. We don't want and um, HP message. We don't want and uh, disconnected. We don't want. 
parser is still there, curl it is still there, uh, Apache bench it, and hopefully it does not suck. Well, this is a single threaded program. Oh, and I'm hitting my, my, uh, my port limit. Hold on. Okay, uh, try that one more time. Ah, man, the port, the, I have to wait for, for, the, uh, for the sockets to time out now. It doesn't matter, it's mildly fast. Uh, it's not super optimal. Uh, another thing to note is that this is a single threaded program and you may have noticed that many of these things like UV run don't have any arguments. Um, so they are meant to be run in a single threaded program. That's fine for Node. Um, once we kind of get going with, uh, with libuv and we're happy with the API, we'll probably add a loop struct to the program so that you can pull on multiple threads at once. And then you'll, you'll have to associate handles with, with various loops in the same way that lib, libuv does it. Uh, for now, this is how it is. Um, we'll, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, this gets you somewhat interested in in trying out LiveUV and possibly contributing to the project. So um, thanks for listening. I will put this code online. Call this UV Web Server. How do you tar a thing again? <laughs> do I have it opposite? Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, let me uh, upload this guy to a uh, server and you will be able to download the code. Um, actually, I, I, have to, I have to clean it. Damn it. Okay. Damn it. Okay. Hold on. One second, you can't leave yet. Parser clean, UV disk clean, quit all these things, make clean. Okay, tar MV web server, UV web server, and tar uh, CF UV web server dot tar UV web server. Bam, gzip, that guy. Ah, it's very hard doing all this on the spot. And uh, I will upload this to nodejs.org such that you know we can actually get it. js.org uv web server tar gz. Do a head request to make sure it's actually there. Yes. Okay. So there is the URL, uh, and uh, I will post this on the internet. So uh, thank you for listening, and goodbye.